All right, in this session, we're going to talk about work, power, and machines. We're going to start with work. You'll see on the screen that I have a definition I'm going to, and some formulas. So I'm going to give you a second to pause the video, and then uh, we'll come back in a second and talk about them. All right, we're going to talk about work. Work is using a force for a distance. Now, you may remember what a force is, you may not. So I'm going to come right back to this page. Let's talk for a second about what force is so that you'll be better with the work formula. Force is a definition of a force is a push or a pull. Notice the pictures. This guy right here is pulling what looks like a sheet that says pull on it. Pulling something, pushing on something, whether it be pushing upward, like in this case, trying to hold it up, or pushing something up an incline. A force that you're pushing <coughs> on something is called a force. That's the word they use in physics instead of a push or a pull. They use force and it covers both words, okay? So these pictures will give you an idea of what a force is. All right, so back to when we're talking about work. Notice it says using a force for a distance. So you're going to be pushing or pulling something for a certain distance. That gives us this formula. Work is equal to force times the distance. How far did you push it? The work done by forces on an object equals the change in energy for that object. So you're trying to push it. You're trying to fight friction as you're making something slide or rolling that boulder up the hill like you saw in that other picture. Work and energy are measured in joules. That is just a unit, and it's usually capital J. And they even tell you here that a joule is a newton, that's force, so work is equal to that, force, and distance. So if you look at the formula, there's the units, joule, and that's a weird spelling for it, but that's joule goes with work, newton is a force. You're always going to have meters for your distance, okay? Let's look at an example of one of those. All right, now this one's not incredibly difficult, but this one, I picked this question because it's tricked a lot of students on the tax test. Give me a second, pause it, read it, and then we'll walk through it. All right, when you have a formula sheet that has all kinds of formulas on it, you have to be careful which one to use. When you read the question, it says, how much work? So you immediately, there's, there's a magic word in there. So you go find the formula for work, which is force times distance. How much work is performed when a 50 kilogram crate is pushed 15 meters with a force of 20 newtons? What's hard about this question is you have, it says how much work? There's your question mark. And they give you three numbers. One, two, three numbers. Well, the formula says it's force times distance. Well, it says force is 20 newtons, so I know that goes there. Distance, is that going to be kilograms or meters? Well, that's distance is in meters. That means this is extra information. That tricks some people. You didn't need that piece of information, so you don't use it. So when you take 20 times 15 on your handy-dandy calculator, 20 times 15, the answer you get... 300, got the answer. Tricks a lot of people because if you take that 300 times the 50, then you end up getting uh, 15,000, and a lot of students pick this one, but the formula doesn't have a place for mass, and so it just, you don't need it. And so it's important that you pick your formula, put the numbers where they go, and if they give you extra information, you don't use it. It doesn't happen very often, but sometimes it does. Be careful with ones like that. Now, when we're doing work, you can see that the boy in the picture is sliding a box across the floor. Um, and if you've ever had to push something across the floor that's really heavy, you wish you had something that could help you. Like maybe if you could lift it up and put it on a dolly, you could roll it. It'd be a lot easier because you have wheels. Well... Those are what are called simple machines. We're going to cover those for a second. Sometimes they ask a few questions about these. They make our work a lot easier. Here are six simple machines 
And so you'll want to write these down. So there's six of them. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'll give you a second to pause the video. And then we'll come back and talk about it. All right, with these six simple machines, these are things that are supposed to make our work a lot easier. You'll notice that here, the guy is trying to get this rock lifted up, and he's using like a crowbar, but he has a pivot point. When he has this pivot point, he now has a lever, and he can push on this end. He doesn't have to push as hard as trying to pick that rock up, but this makes his life easier. If you remember some of the words, this is the fulcrum. That's where it, it teeters, or that's where you can push it. That's where it will actually move. If you have that close to the other rock, it's easier to work. If you move that fulcrum away out here, it's really, really hard to use. Um, so that, that one right there is a lever. Incline plane, um, you saw that. Here's an incline plane in another picture. We saw this one a while ago where they're pushing it uphill. Rather than having to pick up something really heavy like that, that ball or that boulder, you could roll it. It makes it a lot easier. A screw, a pulley. There's a pulley right there. You can run a rope through there and pick up an object using a pulley a lot easier than just picking up the object. A wheel and axle, that would be like on your car, getting your car to roll. It rolls a lot better when it's on the wheel. And a wedge. All these make our life a lot easier. So they make the work not so difficult. Now, I'm going to show you an example of another tax problem that they ask a question. And this one can be confusing. And so I'll give you a minute to pause and look at it and we'll see what we come up with. All right, you'll notice that there's a machine that's going to lift a heavy object. And uh, whenever you have a machine, just like when you drive your car, after you drive your car for a while, it gets hot. They talk about how much energy does the motor convert to heat. Well, you know that your car gets hot over time, so let's see what we find. Well, if work equals force times distance, all right, what's the force? Well, the force is 6 newtons. It says right there, and it's also in the picture. And the distance was 3 meters. Well, just to pick this object up, just to get it that three meters off the ground, it's going to take six times three, 18 joules. All right? And you would see that's one of the answers. But notice they gave you something else over here. The motor's having to use 30 joules. 30 joules. Why is it using so much? Well, we said a while ago that uh, the engine actually makes heat. How much energy does the motor convert to heat? Oh, the energy, the machine is using 30 joules. It only takes 18. 30 minus 18 is 12 joules. Those 12 joules are being used for heat inside the machine. It just builds up heat after a while. So my answer is 12 joules. That one can be tricky. And uh, you just have to know the fact that uh, machines help us, but sometimes they, the machines actually struggle. As a matter of fact, why use a machine? Here's an example. In a perfect machine, the work in is equal to the work out, but it doesn't always work out that very well. And so the machines are trying to do the best they can, but in this case, it's telling you that um, you're losing some energy. So losing, that sounds like subtraction to me, and uh, so that's why that is the answer. That one can be sort of tricky. But that one's not too bad. All right, just have to think. Do your best every time. Remember, you don't have to get every single question on there, right? You just got to get as close as you can. Now, what we're going to talk about for a second is we've just been doing work. We said work is equal to force times distance. But a machine also helps us by doing it faster. If we have to lift a really, really, really large box up on top of a, a building with a rope, we might do it really slow, but a machine would get it to do it real fast. That is what is called power. And power is equal to work divided by time. I want you to look at this equation for a second. Work divided by time. Power. Talk about machines having power. Yeah, power 
is how fast they can do the work. So it's work divided by time. So really what that could also be is work, since it says right here is force times distance. It's force times distance. Sometimes you'll see it written force times distance divided by time. It's the same thing because force times distance is work. All right. So let's look at an example of work and power. We'll work it together, and then in the next section, uh, we'll see if you can do one on your own. Here's one for you real quick. Let's do a problem with work. You're going to have a forklift. It uses a... Uses 100 newtons of force to lift a box 5 meters. What is the work? We'll do this one together. Give me a second pause. Write it down. Since it says what is the work, work equals force times distance. Again, you don't have to remember, it comes right off the formula chart. And so whenever you start seeing problems with numbers, you always want to look at that formula chart and see if you can find a formula to plug into. Forklift uses 100 newtons of force. Well, that means that goes there, 100 newtons. And to lift a box, 5 meters. 100 times 5 is 500 newtons times meters. Or, that's actually called joules. There's the answer. That's the answer I'd be looking for, 500. Again, the units don't matter for the test. You just want to make sure you plug them in correctly. Find the formula, put the numbers where they go, and do exactly what it tells you to do on your calculator. So that was one in work. Let's try one in power. I showed you the formula for power a second ago. Let's see if we can get one like this. You're going to have a crane. Lifts. 50 newtons of force eight meters in 20 seconds. What's the power? You're going to have a crane that lifts 50 newtons of force. Okay, so it's going to use 50 newtons of force. Okay, so it's a box or something that it's going to move. All right, so power equals work divided by time. All right, there's my formula right off the chart. Work, 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 work. I don't see the word work. But if I look at the chart, I see that work equals force times distance. We were just doing that in the last equation. So let's what uh, Force, we have a force, 50 newtons. Okay, distance, 8 meters. 50 times 8 is uh, 400. So the work is 400. So I'm going to put that number right there. 400. Okay. And the time, 20 seconds. 400 divided by 20. Uh, 400 divided by 20 is 20. And this unit happens to be in watts. Just like in your light bulb, a 50 watt light bulb, watts is the power, and so it's in watts. Again, the unit doesn't matter. You want to get the mathematics. So you plug the number where it goes and you solve. This is how this is what work and power are, as well as how to calculate them. In the next section, you're going to try to work some of them on your own. Good luck.